It was early on December the 28th that they slipped out of a small fishing port on the east coast of Sulawesi. Hundreds of GPS coordinates track the risky on its way down around East Timor and south towards Darwin, an unconventional route that evaded detection by Australian border patrols. Somali man Imad Aboud was travelling with his younger brother Muhammad. <laughs> By morning on the 1st of January, the Risky was entering Australian waters north of Darwin. It was then the weather deteriorated according to the passengers. Sudanese man Yusuf Fasha was on board with his wife Marian Ahmed. So big wave is like two, three meters come. Then they hit the boat and then both bodies make shaking. That time there is four people there sitting and Abdullah he was sitting up at that time too. Uh, four people fall down on the water and they don't, we don't have a jacket, life jacket. Imad Aboud says his brother was one of four men who fell into the ocean and disappeared. Another Somali, Saeed Yislam, says his brother also went overboard. Yusuf Fasha used a satellite phone he was carrying to call the international emergency number 112. We called them, they answered us, we told them our problems, we told them we have four people fell down already on the water, we don't have life jackets. Uh, he said, where are we exactly? We need your position. We gave them their position, said, OK, try to keep, be strong until someone will come to you. So we are continue. He says they were told to try to reach land. When I gave him the position, he said, you are near to the island. I said, yes. He said, try to go land down to the nearest island. So which beach did you land on? Come here. here. Uh, then an Australian border patrol arrived. We saw one big ship from far is coming towards us. They came, they round us, some of them by this side, some of them by this side. They said, how are you, are you fine? We said, yes, we are fine, just we have a people, lost four people in that direction. Said, okay, now we are going to look for, for the people, uh, for your people that they fall down, but you, you have to go to the, to the boat. It's not safe place in your place. They said there is a lot of crocodile, there's a lot of spiders, there's a lot of dangerous animals here. The asylum seekers refused to get back on board the Risky. We can't verify their allegations about how they were treated during the events that followed. Passenger Abdullah Ahmed Mohammed says he tried to run away. I started running, they tied me by the plastic uh, rope and kicked me by shoes in the here. Why did they do that? I start to run in the island. I don't want to go back. And they say I have to go back to the boat. Imad Aboud says he was still in shock after the disappearance of his brother. <laughs>
One of the asylum seekers filmed on a mobile phone as Australian military personnel stood guard. When we asked them where we are going, they said that we don't know. This is order and we don't know anything about this. And they treat us by force and everything they said, it's not good. Sometimes they say, you, they speak, you are comfortable. You, yourself, you choose to come. Not, we don't give you invitation to come to the country. So you have to accept the consequences, what you did. They say, sit down, don't do this, don't do this. They are shouting. Well, sometimes I'm not understand. Some words, they would come out from his mouth. And how did the asylum seekers respond emotionally? They are crying. Asylum seekers are also. They are crying. The women are crying. The people are shouting. What happened once people found out that you were going back yeah, to Indonesia? Yeah, the Thursday, I think the Thursday, we started for the, for the protest and something like that. So some people throw the uh, to sweep in or something. I was one of them. What the baby was uh, sweeping. So you jumped he, in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, he jumped to jump to sea. Then everybody come back on the boat. They said you have uh, to to sit on the sign. You now sign. In the sign. Yeah, yeah. They said well, you have to to sit here for four hours. They said now as a punishment you have to stay here five hours. The sun is shining you know, from, a, from a sky on you. This is punishment. The asylum seekers admit they'd already attempted to sabotage the engine. We put sugar in the engine to know water in the fuel. Uh, I see, to stop it from working. Yes, to stop the engine. They claim that once it was up and running again, Australian military personnel limited their access to the toilet, which could be reached by going through the engine room. The second day that they started, they say for the toilet, only one time, for a man in the daytime, for a woman in the nighttime only. The restriction on passengers going to the toilet infuriated some of the asylum seekers. When a female passenger was prevented from going, four men stormed the engine room to try to force their way to the toilet. When she started crying, the young people, they said, no, we have to go by force to the toilet. Then the girl, the so-called poison is believed to be pepper spray, routinely issued to border protection personnel to deal with non-compliant or threatening behaviour. The passengers say Bobby Nouris led the charge to the toilet. He says he was then sprayed with pepper spray and fell burning his hand on a hot pipe in the engine room. يعني بعض وسود دقيق بعض هوسي وجفت مطر كتيس تعلم فمنه يجي المشي جوجين أسكر تهوسي وجرين مركا قلي أو أن رادي إنه سدي اللي يبوه فيه مر مر خال بنتورا شقينا أي أنا هو أو يعني رادينا ميلا خبصة أبار برتيا كده مر نبكان مشو قارلنا دي سنتين اللي يجيلنا نبكان مشو قارلنا علم حركة بابس it was after this, according to the allegations made by passengers, that three asylum seekers had their hands deliberately burned by Australian personnel. I'm in a gate, I saw them with my eyes. Abdullah, he was in a top, I think so. But I'm, I'm sitting there, so they touch, catch from the, his hands like this one, they put it on the exhaust of the engine that is hot, that's taking, you know, fuel, uh, the smoking out of the engine. So they put like this one, one after one. And they told, after they bend them and they take them out, they come and they call me, Yusuf, translate for anyone here. If anyone try to go to the toilet again, we will banish them like this one, tell them. Some of the asylum seekers who were on board the Risky are still reluctant to talk about the incident. They're afraid. 
because they don't want to speak another and they lose the chance for the recognition of refugee and, and then they will face another problem. But now one of the alleged victims has spoken out for the first time. 23-year-old Sudanese man Mustafa Ibrahim was too nervous to be filmed but let us photograph him and record his voice. And who did that to you? Is there any way that what happened with your damage to your hand could have been an accident? He repeatedly insisted it was deliberate and demonstrated how, he says, the Australians grabbed his arms. Yusuf Fasha says he witnessed the deliberate burning of three men. When they cut them, they put their hands on the exhaust of it, one after one. They put one like this, one is a pen, they take hands, they lift, say, take it back. They take it from here and they take it from the windows back. The another one, they put it one after one. This is what they did. This I saw with my eyes, not only me, they saw more than four or five people and all of them is here. You can find them and ask them. Another passenger, Mansour Ali Ibrahim, says he too witnessed the burning incident. But I see the hand making the exhaust. You saw them put the, the hand? Uh, yeah, because uh, the, the time is hand incoming damage. Other passengers didn't see but heard the screams. Weeks later, Mustafa Ibrahim showed us what he claims are healed burn marks. The passengers from the Risky are now held in immigration detention centres across Indonesia. We tracked down 12 of them in facilities at opposite ends of the country. They were surprised that no Australian official had sought to question them or investigate their claims. This, yes, this, yes. Can I make something to move you sure? Yes. Okay. I know. After viewing dozens of photos of Australian personnel who were on board HMAS Parramatta in January, several asylum seekers told us they could identify individuals involved in their interception. Because Yusuf Fasha and his fellow passengers may face years in detention hoping to be resettled. They'll have ample time to reflect on their failed attempt to seek asylum in Australia. The Australian government says that the asylum seekers are making these claims up um, in order to discredit the Australian government's policy. What is my interest that to make claim against the government of Australia? What I can get benefit from it? I know they will never come and take me from here to Australia, 100%. Because the it is a country, it has a constitution. They will never be able to come and take someone from the jail to Australia unless we just wrote the procedure of UN. I know 100%. What's my interest for to do it? Nothing. Imad Abood has just one request. I'm I'm as you know, I mean, but though that's good into Oralke, and then a big machine guy, Waham Karabi Australia. Amali is his. Makarabi, Waham Karabi, no fun. Maha is Oralke had dahish, Haira dis, Haikin to Alashi, Oralke.